And I'm here because some of you requested me showing you at least a finished product of the t-shirt quilt that I'm making for a customer. And I just thought that I'll go ahead and start back at the beginning as to how all of this started. In mid-June, the person who instructs my card making class had someone contact her wanting to have five t-shirt quilts made and she knew that I did quilting so she asked me if it was okay for her to refer them to me and I told her yes and when I actually got a note from the customer she wanted to have five t-shirt quilts made and she needed the first one by July 26. Uh, in the mid-June to July 26 was about six weeks for me to actually get the project done. And so I just told her an approximate price. And then I didn't hear from her for a couple weeks. So last week, the week, uh, the first week in June, the July 4th week, on Tuesday, July 5th, I actually, excuse me, I'm about to sneeze. Ugh. Okay, no sneeze. Sorry. So on the July 5th, I actually wrote her back because I was wanting to know if she really did want a quilt by July 26th. I didn't hear from her until Thursday. And she was saying, yes, she did, that she had been really busy. And she dropped the ball on it. But she wanted to meet with me Friday. And I told her that I was actually going on a retreat. And the area where I was going on a retreat is the area where she lives. So I just recommended that she meet me on Saturday. And we could discuss the particulars. So in her response, she also stated that she was interested in a t-shirt quilt that was where the t-shirts were cut into three inch squares. And I'm thinking that that's very strange. So I decided to take some photos of some previous t-shirt quilts that I made because I wasn't understanding what was the point of a t-shirt quilt if you were going to cut it into three inch squares because you were going to then lose your logo. She then also told me that she wanted it to be four and a half feet by seven and a half feet. So that ended up being somewhere around 54 by 78, somewhere in that neighborhood. So, I decided to meet with her on Saturday. We set a time. She showed up. And I had my pictures. And I also took brought some things to some actual quilting designs, some pantos. So, she can choose from some quilting designs. Because we're actually losing time with this. And when I met with her was when she informed me of what the quilt was actually for. It was actually going to be made from t-shirts from her brother whom had passed last year and on August 1st they want her and her siblings they want to present their mom with this t-shirt quilt made of his clothing and she said the reason why another reason why she was also late getting back with me is because some of her other siblings had some of the clothing and she was trying to collect it all so she brought with her because I had in my intent <laughs> was to originally try to sway her into at least keeping the logos and then maybe putting squares around the logo. But when she came, she actually brought a quilt with her that her grandmother made. And I'm so sorry that I didn't have my phone or camera to take a picture. But and it was cut, made with two and a half inch finished squares. So she knew exactly what she wanted. And so there was no intent for me to try to change her mind because she brought what she wanted. The quilt that her grandmother done was made out of mostly double knit clothing and it was actually hand quilted. And I did tell her that I would not be doing any hand quilting. I just don't do hand quilting. So she agreed with that. We picked a panto for me to do it with. So at 
she also stated that she may not have enough t-shirts and we talked about how to get more t-shirts by going to goodwills or similar type stores and buying them on bulk day where you pay less and or she could go to the store and buy some fabrics that reminded her of him and so she opted to go to the store and buy fabrics that reminded her of them of him and she then brought that back to the center where i was on my retreat as well so she had the t-shirts with her she gave me this big container of quilts so it's just your standard rubbermaid roughneck roughneck tote and i'm just showing you the lid so that you know that this is a big container i think when i went into the t-shirts let me see she had to have anywhere between 30 and 34 t-shirts i didn't count the t-shirts and then she had one sweatshirt and she had two pair of shorts and i have not cut the shorts yet so while i was on retreat i stopped working on my project and i started cutting just enough squares for the first quilt that she needs because she needs five so i kind of divided her yardage and determined that i could cut two to three strips from each fabric and that way i have some fabric to go into each quilt top so this first one here is just plain orange and then she's got a geometric print with triangles This print here, that's fire. Got a print that's Ninja Turtles. A beer print, and this one is actually a flannel. Got a pitch uh, print with little bus and uh, camping bus, tent, little teepees, and a canoe. And it's something else in here. Oh, a light. And a print that has hugs and kisses. And then the last print that she purchased was this print here but she was only interested in the fire so i have had to fussy cut that and i'll be able to get two to three out of each print because it's not a whole lot of that so you can see where i've already fussy cut so those are the fabrics that she purchased and then what i did when I got home on Monday, Sunday, I was just so tired when I got home from the retreat that I just decided I needed to rest because I knew I was going to have a long day Monday. So all day Monday, I took these 30 to 34 shirts that she had given me and I cut the fronts off. So you're looking at the back here of the shirt and I actually cut the front part off. And I used everything to cut pieces. Now the fronts of the shirts on all, I'll say I had about four to five shirts where I had something on the front and the back. So I cut the front and the back of those shirts to get the logos off the front and back. Because what I wanted to do was make sure that some of the logos was included in all boxes. And that's why... I'll show you later where I have some pieces cut for all of the quilts. So what I did was as I was cutting pieces, I was just sorting them into the five boxes, trying to equally place them. So I did that with all the shirts. And I'll just show you a pair of the shirts that she gave me that I haven't cut yet. I had some dry reef shirts also in the container and i did cut those already but these two shorts are the only thing that i have not cut at all so i have a whole container of things 
and then once I got through cutting everything I was still a hundred and fifty pieces short of having I needed to have 704 squares because I am doing a setting that's 22 squares by 32 squares so I needed at least 704 squares and I only had 550 so I went back onto previous shirts and added more like if I had a shirt piece that was left like this at the bottom I added more interfacing and then cut one more strip so these are the ones that I ended with and then I also went back and got more pieces of white shirts and then I just cut the entire shirt and I'm just guessing right now because I can't remember but I think I got 36 three inch squares off the front of each shirt so I was able to get 72 squares off of one shirt so I got two white shirts and that gave me 144 pieces and then I also cut some of these scraps that were left from other pieces so these are the scraps that i actually have left so it was a chore to interface all of these things as well as to start cutting them and then i used a knit interfacing just for somebody that hasn't seen my other video on making a t-shirt quilt so i now have five containers and all of them have some squares in them and so this is my container number two that I'll be making the second quilt out of when I get to that and I just put in my little scraps of interfacing so that I can use them when I go to the next pieces and then I had to do a few shirt repairs so I have some fusible web onto the back of some pieces of t-shirt fabric so I just put everything in here and then all of my t-shirts have the interfacing onto the backs prior to cutting them into three inch squares so that was Monday July 10th and then on Tuesday July 11th I actually started sewing pieces together so let me clear off some of my area here so I started sewing everything into pairs because my rows are even both ways as I said I needed 22 by 32 so I sewed everything into pairs and then I took out 32 of the pairs and set them aside and I also then went back and sewed everything into fours and then once I got the fours together I took out 32 of the fours so that I can sew them to the twos because when I did my rows for 22 I did 8 and 8 which is 16 plus another 6 would be 22 and then I sewed the rest of my fours into 8s so that way when I got ready to lay my rows out I wanted to make it so that not as many of the fabric prints would touch but if they did, I wasn't really worried about it. But I didn't want it to happen 50 times. If it happened 5 times, then I was okay with that. So then I just laid everything out. And then I just held everything together by putting pins in it. And so I have my two eights and a 6. So I did that to all 32 rows. And now I am in the process of sewing my rows together. So I have two rows here that I have pinned together here I have three sections of five rows that are already sewn together so let me show you one of the sections that are on my wall because the other two rows of five are pinned together to be sewn together so I can't show you the entire thing but here is my first five rows so it looks very strange It is a very weird way to make a t-shirt quilt, but if you saw what she showed me and she wanted it to look like her grandmother had actually made them because um, she wanted them in that same style, then it is exactly what she showed me. So I am sewing this together. I will insert a picture up over here to show you 
how I laid them out or what it looked like laid out. And then at the end of the video, I will also show you a picture of the completed quilt before I upload this video. But I just thought that I might want to sit here and document because I didn't get a chance to document this whole process of how I interface and cut each quilt. I mean, I didn't get a chance to document me cutting and interfacing the t-shirts, but I just wanted to come in and do a catch up since some of you were asking me about what it is that I'm actually doing. So um, I will not be doing any more video on this. I I'll just show you the completed top sewn together and then I hopefully will have the quilt top completed before I upload this video. If not, I'll just show it to you on a Monday where I'm just doing uh, what have I done or like a show and tell. So I will see you in my next video. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. So I'm going to do a voiceover here just because I had music playing in my background and I can't upload it. But basically she chose the herringbone panto for me to quilt with this quilt top. And it's a very quick and easy design to do. That's why I gave her one of these choices. I'm showing you some of this stitching because some of these areas was very thick and I had a hard time going through them and sometimes you will see where my hopper foot will stall out and this is just at regular speed I did not increase it because I wanted you to see where it would get stuck I also used the same panto on my basketball jersey quilt so you can see some quilting on there and right here you can see where I kind of got stuck and so I had to move off and get away from that seam line because it had some very heavy heat transfer vinyl in the corner and so it got stuck a little bit and I just want you to be aware that when you're working with this style of quilting and you've got some of the vinyl hitting into the seams that it can be a little cumbersome to quilt over. I'll just let this run until it goes over one more trouble area just so you can see another spot and then I will just trim the video here. So right there was just another one of those little areas that got caught up in the corner. So the only other thing that I did to this quilt top or this quilt at this point when I got it off my frame was I added a two inch strip of muslin around it for my binding and I did not use any batting inside of this the customer did not want any batting and I actually like the feel and weight of this quilt top so I'll just insert a final photo of the final quilt and I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next video bye bye Thank you.